green juice, hanging exercise equipment, treadmill, oversized radio, and unopened cardboard boxes. The robot vacuum seems to have gotten lost while trying to get through all of these things. Unable to get back to its charger, it ran out of battery in the bathroom. There are frosty boxes of pizza, half-eaten carton of ice cream, waffles, and salmon fillets in the freezer. No matter how hard I try to tidy up, I'm astounded by the fact that more and more things pile up. I'm Allison. 40 years old. I've been busy with work, chores, and raising a child, and haven't had time to take care of myself. My 10-year-old daughter Emily even tells me, "Mom, you have to eat breakfast." I know, but it's too hectic with housework and getting my husband and daughter off to work. I normally just end up having only a cup of coffee before I leave. My husband David snickers at me, saying. You're not very efficient. By sitting on the sofa playing with his phone, my mother-in-law Pat is a fixture in front of the TV. We are out of toilet paper. Don't forget to buy some on your way home. She says scornfully. Whose fault is it that I'm so busy? I feel anger boiling up, but I force myself to swallow it and take a deep breath instead. I don't want to argue in front of my daughter. Exactly one year ago, we took in Pat and started living together. The event that led to it was the passing of my father-in-law. He held a high position in a big company, and the in-laws were supposedly well off. When he passed away, David, his sister, and Pat were stunned to find that there was no inheritance. On the contrary, there were debts due to renovation of the house. Car loans and so on. He apparently couldn't change his extravagant lifestyle after he retired, and had spent all his savings. I thought he was living large, and never expected him to be on the verge of bankruptcy. The loan could not be paid off by Pat's Social Security alone, and she had to sell her car and house to make a little extra money. Of course, we couldn't let her. Who had no sense of money live alone? My sister-in-law, who was married and lived with her own mother-in-law, begged us to take her in. Pat, who had spent all of her late husband's money, was not remorseful at all. She induced David's sympathy by acting as a sad widow, who had lost everything and had nobody but her son to rely on. It boosted his ego, and he started to spoil her. A month after she moved in, so many boxes from Amazon arrived. I was so stunned that I asked the courier, "What? Are you sure all of these are for my house?" As I was in shock, looking at the piles of boxes at the entrance, Pat walked up to me, smiling. "The internet is amazing, isn't it? I ordered them yesterday, and everything arrived already. Are these all for you?" Yes, my lovely son ordered them for me. Now please take everything to my room. I felt a bit of anxiety, but I convinced myself that she had just moved in and needed some things. I quietly carried them to her room. It didn't end there. A month later, what? Again? Ha ha ha! I exclaimed unintentionally at the front door. And the courier laughed awkwardly. It was natural that both of us were amazed. That was the third time that a large number of packages had been delivered to the house. Of course, all of them were addressed to Pat. What came out of those boxes were not the necessities of daily life, but bags, healthy foods, CDs, and so on. They were all little luxuries. And were not the kind of things that a person without money would buy. She wrote down the items she wanted while watching TV, and David ordered all of them. She beamed with joy when the items arrived. I could not agree with it, and made my frustration clear to David. Hey, you are spending too much. Shut up! I can't believe you are trying to take away one of the few pleasures of old people. You're spiteful. I don't.
don't mean it like that. But the money... It's coming from me and her, so don't complain. Or are you trying to say that I don't make enough money? He got so angry that we couldn't discuss the matter. Pat, of course, couldn't care less about my frustration and continued writing down what she wanted. And he bought them for her. Half a year passed in that way. When I got home with Emily one evening, I felt something strange in the house. The living room was overflowing with things. Emily noticed the coast first. Mom, my room. What's going on? She asked me to look around the room. Her wardrobe and desk were lined up on one side. I rushed to her room to find David in the middle of moving Pat's belongings in. Wait a minute. This is Emily's room. We have no choice. There is not enough space in my mom's room. It's a luxury for a 10-year-old to have her own room anyway. She will be too spoiled and won't become a responsible adult. You're kidding. She's entitled to her privacy too. Where is she going to change her clothes now? We're a family. She can change in the bathroom or anywhere. If her mother thinks like that, she will start bringing boys over soon. You're talking nonsense. What an inappropriate comment to say to his daughter. Emily had been staring at her room in despair besides me and muttered, Daddy sucks. He was startled, but she went into the bathroom and locked herself in. I let out a deep sigh. I agree with her. What the hell? I just feel sorry for my mom. He seriously didn't think what he was doing was out of line. Meanwhile, Pat was nonchalantly opening the packages that had arrived. I was fed up living with those two, who not only had no sense of money, but were heartless. Emily hardly spoke to them for a week after that. I only supported her and refused to become a bridge between her and them. I was convinced that it was 100% their fault. They must have realized that it was a serious situation. One day, David proposed to cook a special dinner for a change. I was anxious, but I left to him, thinking it was the last chance for him to make up with her. When Emily and I came home, David and Pat cheerfully invited us to the dining table. There we saw for the first time a large electric pot and a pile of crab legs. We fell silent at the sight. David looked satisfied and smug. Emily, Grandma prepared a delicious meal for you tonight. I'm allergic to crab. Oh? I scolded him who looked puzzled harshly. I told you many times that she is allergic to crab, didn't I? I asked you to explain to Pat too because it could be life-threatening. Emily, dear, don't you want to eat my food? It's not that I don't want to, but I can't. She tried her best to explain in desperation. Pat didn't try to understand and made a sorrowful face. David got upset at the sight and scolded Emily. Hey, don't be rude to your grandmother. It's not about whether you can or can't eat it. It's about how grateful you are for grandma's kindness. It's not my fault. I hate you. Emily. She retreated to the bedroom crying and I tried to chase after her. I heard David let out an exaggerated sigh like her father troubled by his daughter's rebellion. It's your fault for raising her like that. He blamed me for it. The thread that had barely held me together was snapped at that point. I didn't want to deal with him and Pat anymore. He was nothing but cruel to insist that her allergy was coming from her selfishness. It would have been better not to have a father who only flutters his mother and hurts his daughter. I definitely did not plan to be dragged down with this squandering either. I stared straight at David. She is a good girl. Who the hell are you constantly pamper your mother and forget about your daughter's allergies? Whose money do you think you're living on? My own. His face turned red and blue like traffic lights. 
In fact, I hadn't received any living expenses from him for the past three months. Pat's purchases increased, and all his salary was going to pay the bills. I didn't care about that anymore. Get out! If you disagree with me, get out of the house! Sure, please go through these then. What is it? Taking the opportunity, I quickly took out the divorce papers from my bag. The day after he took Emily's room for his mother, I visited an attorney's office. Although I had hoped that I wouldn't have to go through with it at that time, I was glad that I was not mistaken in my decision after all. His eyes looked as if they would pop out of his head. He must have thought that I would quiet down if he threatened me. It was too bad for him and was fortunate for me. I will get out of here as soon as I can. You are going to regret this. David was too proud to back down and snatched the papers roughly from my hand. I will come back later to pick up our belongings. Of course, I will leave everything else. You better. Don't touch my stuff. Yeah, yeah. I walked out of the dining room, leaving David, who brushed me away while twitching the corner of his mouth. Pat had started putting crab legs into the wobbly boiling pot. She obviously didn't care whether her granddaughter cried or her son divorced as long as she had a place to live that satisfied her needs. I packed the bare necessities and left the house with Emily. When I peeked into the dining room, I saw a red-faced man downing a crab leg with a beer and an old woman unobtrusively breaking the shell. My decision was not a mistake, I was reassured. After that, I left Emily with my parents, took a leave from work, and ran around looking for a new place to live. I was lucky enough to find a charming house and ask a friend to help me move. Twenty days after I left David, I moved my belongings out of the house while he was at work. Pat was usually in front of the TV, but she was not home at that time. I had invited her to a full day spa a few days ago. She ordered way too many things and didn't remember what she actually bought. She must have enjoyed the bus tour without a care. I put all our possessions in the truck and returned to the new home. That night, I got a call from Furious David. What the hell happened in my house? You are supposed to take only your stuff, you thief! I was fighting back the laughter at the expected turn of events. I intentionally made an indifferent voice and gave him the reality check. Yes, we only moved our stuff. What's wrong? No, you didn't! Washing machine, TV, refrigerator, oven, vacuum cleaner, computer, sofa, dining table, car, and some other things were all bought by me and my parents. Any objection? Is that right? Yes, they were all bought by me and my parents. His house was left with cardboard boxes and health appliances piled up in the empty rooms. When he had to take out the loan to buy the house, I helped with the furniture and appliances to save him money. My in-laws enjoyed splurging on themselves, but the idea of giving a gift or helping others never occurred to them. They didn't help us financially, but they also didn't interfere in our lives either. I never complained about them, but I had no idea that it was going to come back to him and Pat in such a strange way. I left you the house you bought and everything your mother bought. What are you complaining about? What's wrong with that? No, I mean, you know, it's just... It's okay. Your mother will watch TV and will take note of what you guys need to buy on the internet. Oh, you have to buy a TV first. You can afford the latest model with your income, can't you? Your mother is lucky to have such a reliable son. Yeah, but... The robot vacuum will do the cleaning for you. She has three. Oh. But you might want to clean up the boxes out of their way. They are kind of cute, like pets. You should buy a refrigerator soon. Frozen crops and shellfish will thaw, so you'd better eat them as soon as possible. 
also those fish fillets and meat, and I think there are frozen waffles and veggies too. Oh, no microwave oven? You can substitute it with an electric pot you guys were using the other day. Oh, but there is no dining table. Well, you'll make it work. I'm going out for a steak dinner with Emily tonight. Wait a minute. We're having a party for our fresh start. You should too. We'll talk about child support next week with my attorney. I'm off now. Yay! Hey, wait! Leaving behind a squeal of delight that I let out unintentionally, I hung up the call. It was February, but everything I took out of the freezer in the morning was going to thaw in no time. Pat must have been devastated that her favorite TV was gone. I also took out her favorite lamp and down quilt. I imagined them struggling with anger and despair in the empty house, which made me feel a bit better. Then, as I had declared, we discussed child support at my attorney's office. David looked a little worn out, but he didn't want to be seen as a loser and agreed to the divorce with an air of disregard. He shouldn't have had a problem buying everything with his salary and Pat's pension, but they were the kind of people who managed to create one. That was one of the reasons I decided to divorce him. Since then, every time I saw him for a bi-weekly visit with my daughter, his complexion became worse. Pat's scrambling got worse, mistaking that her son chose her over his wife and daughter, which gave her the right to spend money. The fact that she no longer had me to nag her also accelerated her habits. When David came to realize, his savings had run out. In addition, there were still plenty of loans left over from when they bought new furniture, appliances, and a new car. He finally understood that he was in serious trouble and issued a shopping ban. Pat became outraged for not having her needs satisfied and he was angry at her for not listening to him. They apparently fought every day. When she realized that he wasn't going to budge, she took her wallet and went on binge shopping at the supermarket and drugstore. She especially favored a dollar shop and bought whatever she wanted. She was not only wasting money, but also increasing the clutter at an extraordinary speed. Their house overflowed like her daughter's residence. She even bought tons of food, so they went bad before they were consumed. When David had enough and took away her wallet, she cried to the neighbors and caused a commotion. There was even a time when the authorities had to intervene. She deceived everyone by playing a pitiful elderly woman whose son stole her pension. They all blamed David and she got her wallet back. She immediately ran to a dollar shop with great joy. In the end, David only had a year of child visitation. From the second year, child support payments fell behind and Emily didn't wish to see him. My earnings alone were enough, so there was no problem for me. In truth, my life became financially and mentally easier without Pat who never helped me with housework, but only spent money. Emily gradually gained back her cheerfulness. I was very glad that we didn't stay in that house for longer. Five years after the divorce, Here it is, Mom! I have been accepted! Oh my God! Emily receives an acceptance letter from the private high school of her choice. We jump up and down and embrace each other. She has worked exceptionally hard over the past years. She suppressed her desire to play with her friends or to give up and put all her effort into achieving her goal. I too supported her dream to come true by working harder and taking her to and from activities. It was achieved by us, mother and daughter working hand in hand. Of course, the past five years have not been all fun and games. I've struggled to handle my adolescent daughter and had a hard time with the coldness of the public view towards single mothers. What has been keeping me going is surprisingly David. It's not easy being a single parent, right? 
my mom is in a facility now, so come back to me. And I have to prepare to welcome you guys back. Send me money. I'm filled every time he sends me these foolish messages. Pat was indeed spiteful, but he still doesn't seem to understand that he was the culprit who neglected his daughter to look good in front of his mother. Anyway, right before he asked me to get back together with him, I witnessed Pat shopping at the dollar shop. I know that he is in so much trouble that he is selling his house. The two of them who live their lives without effort and remorse, but only with their selfish desire, will continue to fall to the bottom. That is a trivial matter for me now. Emily's smile is shining brightly as she has been accepted after much effort. That is enough to make me happy. So who wants a steak dinner for a celebration? Yes, meat, meat! I take her hand and we walk under the burning red sky at sunset. Her hand, which I haven't held in a long time, has grown bigger than mine. I feel a warmth deep in my chest.